turning, the wheels are turning, the hangout air or the hangout on air is now live. Bam. Welcome everybody to Whiskey Talk and Friendship. <laughs> Two things that are very acceptable. <laughs> hey, I'm Scott. Bart. And joining us today from Chicago, uh, two big Instagrammers, very well known, Ben, who is Single Malt Alliance, and Nate, Whiskey with a View. Welcome aboard, guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. Well, introduce yourself so the people know who they're looking at. And plug, plug. Maybe they know you. <laughs> oh. You first, okay. sir. I'm Ben. Um, I blog under the name Single Malt Alliance on Instagram. Uh, my face is not as visible typically. I think most people probably won't recognize me. I mean, mine's never visible. Okay, well, you're, you're, <laughs> this is the beer that everybody knows and loves. Some people touch your, it. This is your turn. Right. Uh, my name is Nate. Um, I run a, a blog, Whiskey with a View, where I travel all over the world uh, hiking and just taking pictures of whiskey. Uh, so I've turned that into a full-time career uh, where that's that's – that's that's pretty much what I do, and then I just try to meet as as many people as possible. But uh, we'll go into some stories about that that later on. Beautiful. That's right. Yeah. Now, yeah, because one thing I'm going to ask you is, you ever been like hiking to a very remote area, one slip, wrong way to land, and a bottle's been broken? Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> I have never lost a bottle. I have, I have had bottles shift positions rapidly but no shatter ever uh, yet it'll yeah. happen it'll happen that's one the day, worst but. has that ever yeah, happened to you guys? yeah well yeah you're doing better than us we can barely like handle urban living <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're in like a driveway and where you're like climbing a peak scaling a mountain nothing we're walking in a driveway boom a mishaps occurred yeah i don't think i've even had that occur like uh <laughs> losing, losing a bottle i've certainly uh had bottles disappear but that's usually my own fault. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I do that to Bruno's collection routinely. <laughs> uh, the main topic of conversation today and what we're going to do, though, both of you guys are in with the Single Malt Whiskey Society. Uh, Bart and myself have had a lot of questions over the years just Scotch. about it. Right. Right. Scotch. What did I say? Single Malt? Scott, single, yeah. Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Damn. Sorry. There you go. SMWS. Right. Um, so we have a lot of questions that we're going to have for you guys. Um, we did get, you guys got us a bottle of romantic inspiration. First of all, beautiful choice for the two of us. Cask number three. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to put a spark back in the relationship. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If this table wasn't here, we would Sense be in a rift. Like, yeah. We'd be in a cuddle. <laughs> it, is, it is from cask number three, five point one six two. Uh, it is a 21 year old, uh, bottled at 54.5% from a first fill. Hogshead and Bart, what are we gonna do? We're gonna test it. Ah, <laughs> they made. <laughs> yeah, I, the society was really, really kind to I think send us each this bottle, and um, it wasn't. I, I, you know, I didn't have really have an influence in the decision. I think they were just saying, "Hey, this is something really unique," and I think um, love you know love your channel obviously, and kind of follow us on Instagram. I thought it would be a really good you know, opportunity to kind of for those who are kind of new to the society is. Yes, yeah. get into it this way. I think it's uh, obviously we'll be we'll be testing it, but uh, I so thing, I guess thanks to them is an order for. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I've yeah. got another bottle of this at, at in my area, but it's uh, fill levels a little a little bit lower. Oh, well, well uh, evaporation. Spoiler alert! Little... Spoiler alert! I really like it. I mean, <laughs> I saw in the comments we had a little technical difficulties. The camera has been locked on you guys. I just yeah. fixed that. So it should be popping back to us. Whoever's talking, it should be switching back and forth too. Wow. Um, it's yeah. It's been, I've been. I'm, it was it was locked on us for a little while. Okay. That's good. Yeah. You guys are good to look at. I don't know about us. So <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying the view. That's well, there you go. Well, you got first of all, we got good hair on both, and then good beard, and really here, no beard Me. and hairs. And bad. Yeah, yeah, we got to cover it with hats. Gray hair, no beard. <laughs> yeah, hear your palate, and we've all we'll all kind of. Well, oh, you have a Red Sox shirt on, so yeah. you, you got a you got an A plus in my book. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he's doing good. Well, this is actually my one of my teenage son's shirt. Oh, really? You wear your children's clothes? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually an extra large, and I wear a large. That so. is true. You're smaller and tiny. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and I've been wearing it for a couple of years. Yeah, your son's almost as big as me. <laughs> Don't read anything into that. I need a DNA sample. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
All right, so I guess we should probably uh, open this. You know, I think it's a funny comment. This is so unrelated to the whiskey itself, but these corks, the society corks, are always sold out. You get, you get, you get that? Squeaky, super squeaky. Yep. Wow, <laughs> that's a tight fit. I love it. Um, got a beautiful nose right off the bat. Now yeah. I, I know this the the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottles that they love. They're I mean they're so they're kind of an independent bottler. They yeah. they source the whiskeys. They bottle it. They do ca only the cast. It's it's straight out of the barrel with their releases. Like this one is what I say, fifty four point five percent. Are they all j single barrels? Dang, that's good. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe I I think Scott to that point. Maybe we, if we just take a step back real quick for I think for people who are joining in, um, I think a lot of people, if you're really into whiskey, you know, like such as myself until recently, always heard of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and. Thought it was kind of this big super secret thing that quite frankly i i didn't feel like was for me just yet if, if you will um but in essence you know it's, it's it is a global club of whiskey enthusiasts you know it's obviously based out of scotland um but it's got thousands i think over twenty five thousand members worldwide right now and these are just whiskey enthusiasts um who get together through different events um there are different facilities globally you know for members only but but the big thing i mean and, and for me kind of here and is that the whiskey they bottle and it's they're an independent bottler so everything they're, they're purchasing casks and i think what's unique about the society versus other independent bottlers is they have this tasting panel that really kind of puts each cast through this rigorous testing process um to figure out if it's you know really good for, for bottling well i think the most fascinating part of that process that i fully endorse and um i think is the best way to do it is Every barrel selected, um, the panel in charge, they taste everything blind. They know they don't know what type of cask, they don't know the age, they don't know the distillery. It is purely a sensory and and palate experience. So anything chosen, if it's a really killer, you know, even an eight-year barrel. I mean, and if it that's the best and it beats out a 35, they're gonna barrel the eight. So until they're done, I mean, you can make logical guesses, and, and that's part of the fun is the fact that they don't put the distillery on the bottle. You can easily find it out. But it's fun to play the game of like, where do you think this is from? Hmm. Um, this one in particular, I I was I figured out the region, but I, I didn't. I got the distillery. I got the distillery wrong. But it's not one that's you know super super popular. Wow, I think that yeah, I think that's what's cool too is that with these society bottlings, and I guess all independent bottlers, but especially with the societies, I think they have, and you know I don't the society, and if someone wants to chime in in the comment, but. I think they have, you know, partnerships with over 130 in, you know, in Scotland and beyond, really. I think now they're doing things like bourbon and cognac as well. But I mean, there's a lot of different distilleries and a lot of these are distilleries that are really pr producing whiskey to go into blends. We don't really get to see single malt whiskey from them. So it's a totally unique uh, you know, opportunity to taste some whiskey that is really kind of just rare by definition. Yeah, I mean, they only have a core range of, of a 12 year and a 16 year single malt. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll do special releases. And but I mean, this is for me is, is really uh, exceptional as a as a bourbon lover. I mean, this is the most easily the most bourbony smelling scotch I've ever had. Hmm. Yeah, I get a lot of vanilla cream. Yeah, creme brulee for me, which is usually a you know obviously a, a very popular note, but it has more of a, a laid back uh, citrusy uh, smell that comes from the from from a scotch rather than the deep dark uh, fruit or stone fruit notes that you would get from a bourbon. Um, and not so much baking spice uh, that, that, that you would expect, but still to me, like, I remember my father and I, we were drinking this last week, and he, he was, the nose for me is just phenomenal. He, he'll refer to this as a, as a pillow whiskey. It's something he wants to, you know, if you could have this on your pillow and fall asleep to it, that's, 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 that would be just phenomenal. So, yeah, that's a nice analogy right there. Is. Oh, yeah. yeah, feel free to use it. A pillow whiskey. Pillow yeah. whiskey. No, the nose immediately, as soon as you poured it now, in, I was like, I would wow. just point out that lesser known scotches could be referred to as the hit and runs. Okay. What are you talking about? Hit it and run. <laughs> <laughs> I think you make a good point. Are you kind of Not, the fact that well, uh, if you don't know it, sometimes there's a reason for that? Is it like is a one-time kind of one one thing? Like you have to drink the whole bottle at once and then run? Or like can we space it over a few nights? Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a quick one. <laughs> I don't, I don't funnel whiskey. <laughs> I think uh, I get like a lemon lemongrass. Right. Oh same. yeah. No, I guess it's a lot more of a citrusy, like lemon. Uh, I, mean, I think lemon curd is really a good. I mean, I think so. For the for everybody you know, watching, um, 
Yeah, that's the site. So the, the, the use is code system. So this is bottle number 35.162. And what that really means is pretty simple. It, it seems really secretive, but it's really not. It's um, 35. The first, the, the number on the left of that you know, decimal point there is the assigned number for a distillery. And what, what it is really, it's the, it's the, this is the 35th distillery that the society has ever purchased a cask from. And it just kind of increments in order. I think, you know, one is Glenn Farkless, for instance. I believe, you know, three is Bowmore. So it's just based on the order of, of partnerships that they, you know, cast they purchase. And then the one after that, the 162, that means that this is the 162nd bottle from this distillery that the society has ever purchased. So it's really simple, you know. Um, and that's, you know, the idea I, from, from what I learned of with this, this number system is that the society kind of has this belief that, we should we should judge whiskey like the tasting panel like by the liquid itself and we shouldn't really allow things like brand and value and price to really influence our experience with whiskey and i think that's kind of cool and look in the era of google the first thing i did was google what is 35. <laughs> was like, oh. and you know for and, and they don't they don't hide that you know and we can tell you like it's it's the glenn murray distillery and you know in space side um you can find that out in two seconds but the idea is that you want to just really judge the whiskey for what it is. And there are some of these lesser known distilleries who are producing fabulous whiskey. And this is just a cool opportunity to, to try those. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's me and uh, more me and Bart's philosophy as well is just a review of the whiskey that's in the bottle. The juice, the juice. You know, and, and is it worth it? You know, we don't get big into a lot of the distillery history, the details. What's in the bottle? Is it good? What's it taste like? Right. Yep. I completely agree with that. And the nose, I just got like a like a hint of a roasted nut as well. I think this one, it's like a it's. It does look like a walnutty, a walnutty under underneath. Uh, I'm, if you add some water, I think that'll become a little more prevalent. Wow, I haven't had any water, but at 21 years in a first fill, first fill bourbon, meaning you get so so much of that bourbon flavor and the aromas. And it, but it's like it's, it has this like raw. I mean, it's an older, elegant whiskey, but it's kind of raw and it's at, at cast strength. It's it's no sleeper, you know? No. And the fact that they, they toasted it before uh, uh, filling it with the liquid, I think, is really the main factor that it is super bourbony uh, on the nose and, and not as scotchy as you would assume a 21-year single malt would be. Now, I've got to dive in on the taste, but then I'm going to have some more questions on the uh, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society because there's some, there's some things I want to know about, like, different locations I know around the world and things, too. But let me let me dive in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say right off the bat, it's delicious. <laughs> the 21 years is showing itself here. I do get a sherry influence on this. Um, rich and creamy, honey sweetness, vanilla. Wow. Yeah, a lot of it, like I said, it's definitely more of a um, uh, citrusy rather than dark fruit notes for me. A lot more like uh, like orange zest, lemon. Uh, and definitely like super creamy, which um, when it comes to scotch, uh, sweet is certainly a term I use a lot, but creamy, it's, it, I think that's more definitely from the bourbon uh, cast. Yeah, usually I'm getting those cream or, or flavors off of a bourbon. So this is, this is very different. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. 54% is showing itself. And I'm going to add, even though it's, this is good, neat, I'm going to add just, just to a see splash if it of transitions water. a little bit. See, and I love the transitions that are in a scotch. I'll get a lot, generally, a lot more transitions out of a scotch. And that's what I love. Of, that's my, my first go would be scotch, just because I love all the subtleties and what the regions will give you. And even beyond peat, obviously, it's, it's those movements within the whiskey. Well, I just find in, in whiskey in general how even the smallest things that you normally wouldn't think of can have such a significant um, impact on the whiskey at the end of the day, be it uh, types of filtration or lack of filtration or the type of warehouse, the material used, the, the elevation, the, the region. And that, I mean, that, that, that applies to almost anything, but I mean, there are so many, especially when it comes to the types of whiskey. I mean, you can have uh, bourbon has its distinct notes. Scotch has its distinct notes. Uh, Japanese whiskey has that super meaty quality you get from Japanese oak that you can't really get from anything else. Um, and I think what's awesome is the fact that so many uh, countries are now just opening distilleries. I mean, right. 
you got countries with, with in the past 10 years that didn't even, you know, they, they maybe imported some whiskey, but it wasn't anything crazy. Now, you know, everyone's starting to really produce. Right. We got Taiwan, Taiwan. Yeah, you got Australia, New Zealand. They're starting to boom. Yep. Um, you've got, got all some, the Tasmanian stuff with Sullivan's Cove and everything else. Beautiful. Really, really good stuff, too. Really good stuff. Mm. Now, real quick, Scott on comments. Anything coming in? Um, there has been, and I've been neglecting them. I mean, okay. going back, going back to the beginning. I did, I did see one, if, if I may. Um, yeah, go. Please. Please. This is early on. Someone had asked that in if in a situation in which there was a fight, who would win between Ralphie and Horace Looney, uh, who are I think two YouTube, you know, whiskey viewers. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, this is your show. You can address that comment if you want. Um, I think Ralphie would uh, dominate. Oh no, Horst. Oh, I don't think okay, so. Okay, I think, see, this is another instance which Bart and I have the same palette and opinions. I think Ralphie would probably take that, you know. Yeah, I think Ralphie's got some grit. He's got that whole racing thing that he's doing. Uh, yeah, I think I think he's got, I think, first of all, the hat could be a distraction technique. The, 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 the driving cap comes off. It's in horse face. Horse is not sure what's going on. Boom, Ralphie's hitting and striking immediately. <sighs> <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't played this out in your head at all, have you? <laughs> no, I've never even that right there. You gave it to me, but it's immediate. Yeah, and I've stunned Scott. There's nothing coming yeah, out here. Think, Back yeah. up the horse. I no, mean, what? He's yeah. he's a martial arts expert. No, what are you thinking here? No, Ralph is giving us tasty notes and talking about how good uh, horse punch used to be, and he's messing with his hat. And by that time, horse just slugs him. I right think the horse nose. is still swishing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but yeah, if there was that hang-up, I, th I think there would be a, a natural pause. There would be both going on. So so then take it past the switch. What happens? Past the switch. Sure. I he gave swished, you That's he done. He punched him in the horse punched him in the nose. It's over. No, no, Ralph, he could take a <laughs> nose punch like nobody's business. I mean, he'd be like, what, again? Come on, my wife hits harder than that. That would be, there would, there would be a German reference maybe. I don't know. I'm German, so I'm going to throw that out. I would pay a hundred euros, pounds, dollars, whatever to, to see that fight happen. To see that fight happen. Yeah, yeah. Somebody would like uh, that that can draw or come up with some creative. They could do that as even like a comic strip kind of thing, and I think it'd be hilarious. I mean, that that could that could challenge the McGregor Mayweather fight. I mean, <laughs> watch that anyway. That would be perfect. So, what do you guys think? Uh, how do you think the water has affected um, the taste and, and profile of this? Um, it's de I, I think it's helped. Um, it's definitely brought out uh, more of the creaminess. Yep. Um, I still think, I still believe that the sherry influence is in there pretty good, or what I'm getting as a sherry influence. Hmm. Um, now, and I know this was billed, I believe, as a, I think it was a $175 bottle. Yes, correct. And if I had paid, I'm just saying, you know, if I'd bought this out of pocket, um, I, I wouldn't have any regrets about yeah. buying it at all for that. Phenomenal. Yeah, and it's the my my thing, especially with whiskey, is I, I, I mean they're they're obviously the staples of, of excellent whiskey, but I love unique ones to a, to an extent. I've also we we sampled some some hot sauce whiskey the other day, which was not <laughs> yeah. pleasant. Um, so yeah, there is there is a, a limit to that, but this for me is is one of the most unique tasting single malts I've, I've really ever experienced in the sense of how bourbon forward it is, but it it doesn't taste um super uh, oaky, which is why I believe that it was not charred at all and honestly just, just toasted when it was yeah. repurposed. You get the sweeter elements of bourbon without really kind of the raw, I mean, I, I kind of alluded to the, the rawness of this whiskey for a single malt, but relative to bourbon, it's it's still very kind of elegant. And very much so. And the, the drop of water brought out maybe what I would describe as the sweetness is a little bit of cane sugar, like that mm -hmm. pure sugar. Sure. Um. Uh, then, then in the finish, I'm getting. Um, I'm going to have to come back in because some real nice transitions of of uh, of a a little bit of a nuttiness, but a lemon grass. I mean, I'm going to have to come back in. It was just delicious. Graham Graham cracker, baby. I was thinking like lemon meringue pie almost is is really like a, a good way I would I would describe the finish mm. with a with a graham cracker crust. Yes. Well, that's the way you're supposed to eat it. I mean, right. <laughs> you know what? You're exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. That is a perfect, that's a, that's a perfect description. You got the creaminess from the meringue, the lemon, and then yeah, graham cracker. Now, uh, the one glass oh. man has asked us to discuss the label code, which we, I mean, you did, uh, you hit right. the, you kind of hit it. 
35.162, the 35 distinguishes the distillery. Uh, did you say what the 0.162 that's is? That's the bottle. That's the, the, the bottle. Of, the bottles from that distillery. No, oh, that's actually the, um, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's, um, that's the, the 162nd cask that they purchased from that distillery. Got it. In, in addition, it says, um, this is one of 234 bottles in total. In Got the, it. Yeah, for this cast, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the United States gets a certain allocation. Um, so different countries, um, will actually get different uh, uh casks that, that are not available, um, in you know here or anywhere else. So, um, that's one of the things I absolutely love is there's so many different releases, and I know there's some serious collectors, I know, like, uh, especially over at like Jack Rose, um, Harvey Fry over there is just wall, there's like a wall dedicated to Scotch Malt Whiskey Society releases, but. Um, we're not, we're not in Canada, but how does the LCBO deal with this? And not, nothing at all because it's independent bottling? Or are they in, are they controlling that? How does that work if you're in, say, Canada? So, so my understanding is um, the society has different branches in different countries, and so um, you know this this bottle was generously sent to us by this the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. Mm -hmm. Canada has its own chapter, and the, you know my understanding is that members of the society can are only really able to purchase bottles at, every month when they come, when new releases come out from their own chapter um you i mean you can have you can talk to other members of other chapters that have just to do swaps and whatnot but so they're different chapters from different countries um i don't know the number of countries off my head but someone wants some chime in that's awesome but um that's kind of the, the flow is it, kind of that way and so distribution and everything and what's available is all based on to which country you're in so I think, you know, like this is 35162. I don't know necessarily, and this is, again, something uh, that people can answer, but- Yeah, Whiskey Thistle, so he's from uh, Canada. Cool. Uh, so he, he knows how it works over there too. So uh, yeah, this is, you know, bottle, you know, 35162. I believe, that, you know, it, it's not only the United States chapter here that got this whiskey. I think others had allocation of the same one, um, but it may have not been the same month. Last month when this was released, it could have been others as well. Um, but I just got a text message that says there are 19 countries in total. Uh, from Amanda from the society. Thank you, Amanda. We have oh, Amanda our, go. Our, our in person. <laughs> no, yeah. Beautiful. 19. There's, it's surprising how many questions we can ask on air that get answered. Because people oh, are yeah. right there with it. The expert. We have an excellent audience that's very knowledgeable. And, you know, I'm the first to admit, like, I learn every single day uh, something. Oh, yeah. But I'm the guy that if you teach me something new, I'm going to pester you until I find out all the things you know. I, I will continue to – you got to tell me to shut up at some point because I'll just pester, especially like when I meet um, – uh, I mean, I worked as a brand ambassador for three years. But if when I meet brand ambassadors for other brands, like they, they basically have to be like, okay, Nate, other people have to talk to them too. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't steal them the whole time. So. Um, I was going was gonna to point out it's kind of scary, but – Scary. Someone, yeah, because someone out there, I'm telling you, knows how many pair of underwear I have in my drawer. If I asked it, someone would give the answer. I said I would never tell you all that. <laughs> There's that one pair you need to get rid of. <laughs> okay, if uh, Claire the Third has asked uh, Bart, are you going to score this? I generally do not score when I'm sitting down with something for the first time. <laughs> no, I'm this just is an ongoing run. He was asking run. me oh. what I would score it. Oh, he did you. ask me what ongoing I would score. Ongoing run, it. yeah, because I want to spend some time. This is mid nineties. I mean, oh, this is a ninety three to ninety five in that range somewhere for me. I'll give a range. See, I'm not afraid to give a range. No, I fear nothing. <laughs> but, but Scott, if you're going to air, you got to air boldly. I mean, yeah, that's right. There that's right. we go. Bring it. My method. I, I mean, a range. Come on, like that range is it can make or break everything. You know. So yeah, plus, plus or minus eight. Is that yeah, what you want to do? It's a 93 there? to 95. Yes. There's only, there's a 50, 50 chance of that, but there's only a 30% chance of that. Wow. I mean, if we want to get real complex, we can even do the, the rating system of, of uh, nose palette finish. Ooh. Um, I mean, for me, the nose is, I mean, I love the whiskey as a whole, but for me, the nose is my absolute favorite part of this particular whiskey. Like I can, I, I, I crack this uh, when, I'm pretty sure I basically opened it while the FedEx guy was walking off my porch. Like the bottle was open immediately, and uh, imme like, and it took a while for me to sip it because the nose just it blew me away. And the whiskey as a whole is wonderful, but for me, the nose, um, for my, for my, um, 
for myself particularly is, is my absolute favorite part of it. I mean, obviously the rest of it is fantastic as well, but the nose for me is just so unique and so mm -hmm. bourbon-y for a scotch. I, and I'm a big bourbon guy. It, it just, it, I absolutely adore it. It is very unique. That's exactly, I mean, the second you poured it too, it was, it was billowing yeah. out and I was like, wow, what, what is this? Yeah, when I when I when I poured it and, and uh, uh, Amanda and, and Brianna over at Scotch Whiskey Society, they're like, "We're sending you this one. You're gonna love it." And I trust them implicitly, so I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'm sure I will." And I smelled it, and immediately was like, "Oh, yep, they know. And like this is this is something that is just something I've never I've out of the thousands of whiskeys I've had, I've never had something that's that really resembles." I will tell Amanda and Brianna that I love it too. Wow, I will go <laughs> this far that if cousin Shane was here, he would have rated this as. Almost as good as Giggle Wiggle with Mama on your birthday. Yeah, that'd be in that range. <laughs> so that's playing Giggle Wiggle with Mama. It's playing? Did I miss it? He's yeah. got it way better. I can't keep up with his tracking system. <laughs> playing Giggle Wiggle with Mama on your birthday is the yeah. special one. Yeah. Right. Well, there's HNFT. Happy Naked Happy Fun Naked time. Fun Time with Mama. <laughs> that's one of his ratings as we, well. We actually, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have an episode where where cousin Shane comes on and explains his ranking system. That'll be a whole special. We'll do it another time. Sorry. Sounds like, sounds like one that YouTube's going to take off pretty quickly. I think it would be, a hit. <laughs> I think it would be perfect. Yeah. H and F T. Now. Uh, so now, I will tell you though, I did, I did. I, I had a couple of small trams out of this before today. I didn't take notes because I really was just enjoying it. And I kind of thought, I want to drink about half of this bottle before you even get. Yes. Here. Yeah. Scott kept telling me, Hey, I tried a little bit more of that, that <laughs> Scotch malt whiskey society bottle. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he'd be like, had a little more of that. And I'm like, dang, we need to have the show like quick. Cause it's going to be gone. I noticed it looked nah, a little it's, light. It's still, no, it's still good. It's a dark bottle. <laughs> yeah. You didn't cut it, right? You didn't add water to the bottle. So yeah, right, just to yeah. fake me out. I, you know, I, I don't, I've never really scored, scored a whiskey. Personally, I, I, I enjoy other people's scores. Um, but I think, you know, overall impression is this, is it such a unique whiskey? You know, it's 21 years old. Uh, it's a 21 year old space sided cast drink, which first of all, that's, I mean, we can talk about the, the cost and accessibility of, of that whiskey just yeah. for, across any facility. First of all, being first fill, it's just such a unique whiskey. And I, I mean, listen, this is, I, and I, I noticed someone, comment but we should do more research but i think you know the price of this is it's not a cheap whiskey you know it's a it's a 175 dollar bottle but that's a lot of money but if you're kind of like us and you're into whiskey and you think about what's on the market that's a great deal yeah a cast strength you know and if you're one to probably you know add water what's the cheapest the, the longevity of this whiskey is a lot you know greater than that of other kind of 43 46 percent bottles that's, that's what i was going to say nate for a 21 year old and when you look at it uh, how many 21s, 20, 21 year olds do you buy that are 40%, 40, yeah. 41, 43? Well, they're easily 200 plus dollars yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Now each Christmas I kind of buy a special, I mean, to me, that's a high dollar bottle or, I mean, that's at, at the well, range of a high dollar bottle. 300 two is to, roughly your deal around Christmas. Maybe 200 to 300 range. And I, and it's, it's always a sherry based. You get me like a bottle favorite. of bond and then you pick yourself up. A, oh, a yeah. Present. You get like a rye, bullet <laughs> rye. <laughs> Nothing but, wrong uh, with that. And I, you know, I'm just sitting here tasting this. Had I spent $175 and bought this as one of my Christmas bottles, I would not be disappointed at all. This no. would rock and roll. No, phenomenal. Yeah, I have never been. I think single cast whiskey is really going to become just my preferred you know, from independent bottlers. I just find that when I look back at you know the most memorable whiskey I've tasted, most of it's come from independent bottle, you know, single oh, cast absolutely. whiskey. But I've never had a society bottling and I haven't had a ton of them. I want to be the first to say that, but I've really enjoyed everyone I've tasted and they've all been so different from different you know, styles and, and ages. And while most of them, I think as a bottler are, are older than I think the average age is probably older than some other independent bottlers, but it just, it varies. And I think it's just such a unique whiskey right here. And then the other ones I've had are nothing. It's just hard to compare to what's on the market. And being a member of, of such a well-established organization is super unique because they have access to these things that you usually can't find. I mean, there are only a handful of, of, of independent bottlers that can get access to a 21 year single barrel. That's like not, that's not common at all. That is, uh, I can think of maybe three off the top of my head that, that, that even 
not even nowadays, but even before that, um, that I've seen, I'm sure there are more out there, but that, that are popular that I've seen. Um, it's not that easy to just go in and get it. And and for me, one of the things I love about Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is um, many of these distilleries don't offer cast strength expressions. And and we were actually speaking about this uh, before. We were talking about uh, uh, Glenfiddich and how you know they they don't they don't really offer a, a regular release. They're special releases that are cast strength, but. It's really cool to see a distillery that, that you've drank for many years and get to try something right out of the barrel before it was made for the general public that you know is going to be great for your palate. I, I think that's one of the coolest things. Well, I, I agree 100%. We were talking to Roy Duff like, what, three, four weeks ago from Aqua Vitae. Aqua Vitae, yeah. And he was saying about how he wishes we, he and Scott and I, had more access to some of the independent bottlers and, and the expressions he'll get because he lives in Glasgow and uh, because we, uh, even in Kansas, we don't see as much independent bottlings. And then even the States doesn't see as much in general. Well, he'd sent us, um, it was the, Dow, I think Dow you Wayne uh -huh. uh, distillery, a couple independent bottler or one independent bottler of it, this which was really good. Phenomenal. I just bought a Gordon and McPhail 15 year old Linkwood. I mean, it was like $85. That's delicious. That's There's some good price. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's some delicious independent baller, and you can get good, well-known uh, distilleries, well-aged stuff, you know, a lot cheaper than you can direct distillery bottles. For me, now, Roy, uh, and actually, Aqua Vitae, Roy is on here commenting, and he does point out I did not know that. Uh, that the ABV of the SMWS bottlings makes it more expensive in the U.S. as an import, hmm. which yeah. I had heard that the higher, higher, you pay more taxes on higher ABV stuff, oh, bringing it into this thing. Yeah, because I go, well, it's literally, it's literally alcohol by volume. So by volume is, yeah. But I mean, for me, like I'm in a part, I'm in, I'm in several groups where we buy barrels of bourbon. And, you know, if you, if you know the right people, it's not hard to get into them. And uh, it's a really fun, awesome process. But um, it's definitely far more limited, obviously, living in the United States um, to get uh, scotch. So I'm just so happy that there's a company that has – taken that it's brought it here and you know it, we're getting like i said barrel picking groups are awesome but it's a lot of stress for whoever's organizing it um you have to really trust the the, the members and and what scotch Malt whiskey society offers is you can go through and get a very good idea of which one you're going to like the most and you can get something that you know you're one of a few several hundred not even just just two usually 200 people or sometimes 300 people sometimes far less that they're the only people in the world that are gonna get to try that and that for me is like one of the coolest things yeah I think I'd, like to, I'd like to point out while you were talking that bart poured him some more what? and uh I'm, i can't let it do that anymore i don't know so if you need i'm hiding that. i'm hiding the bottle from i gotta him. catch up to what you've done <laughs> oh wait i, I was yeah, I was doing this, we've been doing this all the time. No, I, no, no, no. I think I think Bart, you're saying that because Scott <laughs> has been drinking half that bottle. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's. I was thinking, you know, I need to go easy with this, and I thought, wait, Scott's ahead of me. Bam! Finish that off and re-pour. I mean, it's Saturday. I think so. I think there's something yeah. to be said too for like you know, enjoying a whiskey. Like, okay, this bottle in front of us. We're never gonna have this whiskey ever again. You know, it's kind of a cool, and and I, I hate to see bottles go at times, and I. But it's kind of cool saying, you know what? I'm gonna enjoy this. I'll have, there's a lot of whiskey that will be kind of like it. I I personally have never had anything like this to date, and I've tasted a lot of whiskey, you know. But I think it's just something to be said for that. I have a bottle. It's one and done. It's and then I'm just going everywhere. But, oh, but uh, just, and, well, I agree with you 100 because I think you and I look at life very similarly. <laughs> Yeah, this is this clean up. Yeah, we got we got, a, we got our buddy. He'll take care. Hey, right. we love dogs. Hold on, we'll be he, quiet. We got to see. No, he, I spilled some whiskey. He loves. I'm not, you know, suggesting that everybody allows their dog to drink whiskey, but there's a couple drops that. Yeah. Now, what's his name? Go. What's his name? This is Dexter. He's, He's a having a good day. Ten year old now. French bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> and he Yo, loves. Oh, Dexter! Look at that. See, we don't let it go to waste. We can't have that. Yeah, not to say. <laughs> Just hope Peter isn't tuning in. That's right. He had some peanut butter on the desk. That's there. right. <laughs> All right. He tested it. Dexter, he <laughs> tested it. I bet Dexter. I bet Dexter would score. Yeah, Dexter would he score. Cleaned the, he just cleaned the table too. <laughs> Dexter would give that two paws up. I think so. Yeah, he doesn't score on the first sip. Yeah. Yeah, Dexter would give that like better than giggle wiggle with the poodle next door. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I lost five people there. They're like, what the hell? 
I, ah, yeah, I did see the number drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the tell poodle, us, the poodle haters are gone. Tell us about some of the requirements or the uh, becoming a member with the SMWS. What that costs? What's the? What do you have to do each year to stay in there? Blah blah blah. Do you want to answer? No, no, no sure. Um, um, yeah. It's 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 very simple. I mean, anyone. For now, can join. I mean, um, I, I I can only assume eventually there will be a, a cutoff point uh, due to you know demand being far higher than supply. But right now, if you sign up, uh, it's ninety dollars a year uh, membership fee, um, and then with that membership fee, they send a really nice like a uh, uh, magazine, monthly magazine of all the options available. Um, and then you have full access if it's available in the United States. It's a first first come first serve. So once they're released. You get on the website, you order your bottle, um, they ship it right on over. Sorry. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Guys. <laughs> Someone commented. I, I didn't mean, I've been interrupting. Oh, it, that's great. It's too much fun. Someone just said the dog is drinking better than I am today. <laughs> 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 but that was an important question. That is, that is, that, that is exactly, yes. Dexter is just like, yeah, he's had a better dram than some of other people. Yeah, on that was DH, DH Silv, too. Yeah, Silv. We love the Silv. Yeah. But, yeah, it is It is a super uh, simple process. You pay the $90, and then there's a uh, gladiatorial battle to the death in a set arena. And whoever wins, they get the membership. And, you know. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgot to mention that part. Yeah. No, uh, but, no, I've got to ask. I've got to ask, though. Isn't there, a, is there a higher <laughs> level membership that allows you access to, like, some exclusive club bars around the world? No, I, that's just included in membership. Yeah. You can um, just anyone can know. Yeah, the society. I mean, that's, that's all part of it. I, I think I had the impression that, you know, it's more cost per head of, excuse me, cross cost per head of, uh, that Glenn Murray. There you go. It's, <laughs> it's more expensive than I thought it would be. Um, it's a hundred bucks now. I think they've reduced that recently, but it's pretty simple. It's you join and you know you can get a taste. You can buy a tasting kit if you want, but a hundred bucks is an annual fee. And you know if you're buying whiskey and you know and you're in the position we we are, for instance, or 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 if you don't know as much about whiskey and you don't really know where to where to start, but you want to just trust that the sources be provide you with really good whiskey. It's great. And I you know it's. So hundred bucks if you're buying whiskey like this, like you said, Scott, for Christmas. And look, it's this is something that you'd probably spend a few hundred dollars with if it was in the market. But it doesn't exist on the market, like you know what I mean, at this ABV. But if it were hypothetically, you know, it's great value. And I think hundred bucks is really nothing for what it is. And a fun little plug on that too is uh, so uh, generally uh, around Christmas time or my birthday, um, people want to get me a gift, and they, they're terrified to get me whiskey. Uh, <laughs> But if, if that's something, if you have a family member who um, is really into whiskey and, um, you know, they have access to the liquor stores, like I know I can get my hands on, you know, pretty much anything I really, really want if I need it. Um, but it's cool because hypothetically, uh, mom, wink, wink, uh, if someone ordered a bottle of this for me off, it's something that, you know, if, if I wasn't a member, I wouldn't have access to. That'd be like the coolest Christmas gift, honestly, in my opinion. But as a whiskey geek, I'm sure there are you know, thousands of people like that, too, where you can really get something that is anyone can get as a member. You just kind of have to know what they like. And, and if you get that, it just it, it, I think it would really make someone's day to get something like, wow, I, I couldn't go to my local, local liquor store, any liquor store and pick this up. Uh, this is something. That, well. And it, it, I mean, the way you put it there, it's almost better suited. Like if you're joining, if you're more experienced in whiskey and you kind of know what you like or what you want to look for, um, because I take, you know, beginners go into liquor stores and they're overwhelmed when they see the, the array of bottles in front of them and they don't know what they like. If, if you spent some time and you know your whiskeys and you know what you're like, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, you can pull up the catalog. You can look and say, well, I don't like Pete's, so I know that oh, one's not for what? me. Don't, or, don't even, yeah, let's not was, even Don't imagine. take that personal. Yeah. No. I'm I that you. wasn't untagged. No, I mean, I was stunned. <laughs> Sorry for the background noise. I don't think yeah. the dog was used to the, the ABV level. And he's, <laughs> yeah, Dexter had to go <laughs> get some water. water. He's like, he's no, not water. that one. He's hungry. Yeah, he's hungry. Where's, my, where's my tin bowl? I need some agua on that I bad boy. That was a that cast strength was lighting me up. Yeah. <laughs> wow, twenty one years. Well, that that's good to know because I'd actually I'd run into somebody and they were telling me now they they travel a lot for business international, and they were saying that um, 
that they were they were looking at Scotch Malt Whiskey Society because they knew there were some places, some major cities that they could pop in, and they knew they would be around like a the shared love, like the whiskey fabric extended. That they knew if they could go find, you know, a, a particular private club from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, that they could then meet the folks, get some drams that they couldn't normally get. But they were asking me about it. And I said, you know what? I don't know enough. The most I'd learned was from Sam Spears, actually in New Jersey mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. an early, early fan who had said, yeah, I, I, I pick up some bottles. And I think he had wow. something peated about three years ago that he sent us a Kissing sample. a smoker. Kissing a smoker. That's it. Bam. How do I remember that? Wow. My early <laughs> Alzheimer's is kicking in. I don't know how you did that. Yeah. So that there are, you know, there are different you know, facilities for you know, members only. Um, they also have partnerships with different bars. I mean, here in the U.S., for instance, you can actually go. You don't have to be a member to actually taste the whiskey. They have, you know, maybe in major cities, I'm just going to guess at this point, one to, to three different bars. Um, you were mentioning the one in D.C., for instance. Oh, we, have one in Chicago. Loaded. we have one in Chicago. Um, possibly, possibly do, but Fountainhead is one in Chicago, a big whiskey bar. Um, and I think that for selecting partner bars, they, there is a criteria from, from – what I understand that you have to be predominantly, you know, have a good selection of whiskey, have to have a good whiskey crowd, but you can go there and taste some of the, these bottles that they'll have at these partner bars. And so, you know, wherever you guys are, go, I think you can go to the, the SMWS website, look in, you know, look up the different partner bars in your city and just go try some of the different whiskeys without even before you even join. You know, so, uh, I was going to, Scott Monroe points out that after you join the SMWS, after that, your fee is lower than it was when you initially joined. Yeah. So to renew each year, it's a little lower. Yes. Well, I don't know about each year, but after the first year, it goes down. It might stay down. May, I don't know if that's just European or in the States as well. Well, he's, what I, he's what I, that, 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 that fee is basically just covering the cost of, um, the, the, like I said, the, the booklet they send you every time. And, uh, you know, it, a lot of that, is I don't think they make all that much money off of that fee. It's it's mostly just out of necessity. Um, the the money they make is off of the actual bottles themselves, um, which I mean, in my opinion, speak for themselves. Hmm. Uh, a couple things here, real quick. Uh, thanks to uh, Malted in Montreal, he just donated two Canadian dollars, <laughs> which is like twenty cents yeah, it's American. Twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, we always make yeah we're always Canadian getting on friends. the Canadians a little bit yeah. sorry we know it's more than 26 cents it's like 78 <laughs> uh, and then Eagle Rare 10 just commented he said thanks to your review and advice I just picked up a bottle of the Balvini 1509 I can't wait to crack it that's mm -hmm. three, that's three. Yeah, yeah but he three, says yeah. but at 429 do you think that was too much to pay for it you'll no. say no I no. would say yes no I'll tell you what, you can join the society for 99 US dollars, purchase this <laughs> bottle for 175. Right. Now, see, this is worth that price. The, the, I know you love the ton, batch three. I wouldn't oh, pay yeah. that much. It is, it is amazing. It is amazing. It, well, I shouldn't say I wouldn't pay that much for it because I almost did. <laughs> hey, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. There you go. Boom. And I've thrown both. I've thrown both, baby. Uh, if you haven't, those that are watching, if you haven't watched it yet, our review today of the Balvini Ton 1509 Batch 3 came out. I also did a little uh, write-up blog uh, on, our, on our website that Whoa, I pushed out really? about it. Yeah. Huh. So a couple different avenues there you can see. Uh, a while back, I bought a bottle of the 1509. I dropped it in my driveway. It shattered, and I got another bottle. You can, uh, If you watch today's review, you'll find out how. Yeah. I just, I just, I just wiped some tears away from my eyes. I'm sorry. That is, <laughs> that hurts. That cut deep. Yeah, Scott. Had you heard? Had you heard that one, Nate? I thought this was supposed to be a happy video, and now I'm really depressed. He got, he got a replacement. <laughs> Scott, whoa, hold on. The lid came off. I don't know if you can touch this is, that. Is this say round two? No, this is the <laughs> yeah. one. This is the one that dropped in my oh. driveway. The lid got smashed. Gosh. Oh, this There's, is the damaged one. Yeah. yeah. Ah. What happened was it almost like it hit on the lid oh. and then it like rotated, I think, and the bottom hit the concrete and it just shattered it. Boy, well, you, now you have a very expensive shank. So. Yes, I think he, keep, he, <laughs> yeah, keeps that, he keeps that handy. Like, don't touch that Scotch malt yeah. whiskey society again. I'm pretty sure I would have been, I would have been on the ground picking up whatever was in and just 
No, I, was, I, mean, I was digging the rest of the day. Just, just... I would I would have been doing what I like to call the Dexter. <laughs> I would have. Oh, of course, I would have done that. I would have dexted well. the shit out of there was, There's the uh, that's right. The chart of right. the different cast. I would have dextered the shit out of that. That's a shirt. <laughs> Future there's, shirt. There's Sorry, terrible. we try not to curse. I, I apologize. I would have scored it off that concrete. Oh God, yeah. You know the nose was probably beautiful. It was like a hundred degrees that day. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's <laughs> roasting. Yeah, that would have been like that instant, like like to steam. Like, I only got that for two seconds, but it was glorious. And to, to cap it off, that was that's the most expensive bottle I've ever bought. Yeah, wow. That was the most expensive, uh -huh. and you christened it yep. on the driveway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's 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 play this game then. What, what's the most expensive that you've ever bought? Then, if that's his. Actually, the most expensive wild, I wild bought, turkey 101. No, was the replacement I well, surprised yeah, him with. <laughs> he did. Uh, it, uh, I said to watch the video to find out how. Right, I got sorry, replaced, watch but, the video for the surprise. Bart, yeah. Bart surprised me. But, and, uh, I will say before that, that it was the Black Arts, Brook Lottie Black ah. Arts 4.1, and then we also, as the show, we bought the 5.1. I still think the four one was better, but we got some serious thumb downs for even approaching that four one was better than five one. So, so Bart, I, I am a self proclaimed Brook you know, fanboy myself. No, you are. You're not no. self proclaimed. You are. Yeah, you. Port Wait, okay. Charlotte. I'm Port Charlotte. Ben, Ben, back up. If that's where you were going, how you and Nate are together this weekend, and what's led Ooh, up to this point? Tell the story. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to hear about the travel of the bottle as well. Sorry, I'll be quiet. So it is. It is a. It is a fun little story. So, um, as, as I said, I, I switched from. Uh, I worked in the whiskey industry for uh, three years with uh, William Grant and Sons as a brand ambassador, and then with uh, Michter's Bourbon, um, well, and Ryan Whiskey in general uh, for a while as well. Um, before pursuing uh, what I do now. Um, where companies will pay me to photograph bottles, uh, feature their work. And then I also do um, a lot of consultation when it comes to social media, marketing, uh, targeting consumers, coming up with, you know, unique ideas. Um, so uh, for fun, I, I, I found a couple of uh, Brooklady 2001 Resurrections uh, in a liquor store in New Jersey, you know, below retail, dust on them, snatched them up immediately. And I posted them, and ever since then, any time it appears in any picture, even from renewing another whiskey, Ben over here has commented, "I want one." Uh, so, I just said I want to try it, like at first, at first. Then you, <laughs> when the was made, then then I started getting yeah, death yeah. threats, mysterious ones in the mail. We're not sure who sent them. We don't know who sent them, but you know, it was Chicago Tribune. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so. So I told him, I was like, oh, you know, I'll save you a sample and I'll, I'll send it to you. And then uh, I finished off my bottle and I was, you know what, Ben loves Brugladi. I was like, why would I, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'm going to give you the whole bottle. You can have the whole bottle. Uh, I'll, you know, ship it to you or something. And then, you know, once I started doing this full time, I, I set my own schedule. I was like, uh, I, 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 I was like, you know, it's time that you got this bottle. I'm going to bring it to you. He's like, what? And I said, I'm going to drive out to Chicago and I'm going to hand deliver this bottle of whiskey with you and we're going to hang out and you know, we'll, we'll drink in slight moderation and <laughs> you know, it'll be a cool experience. So, um, for the past couple of days, uh, I traveled up North and then cut across, uh, Canada actually, which was a mistake. I'll never do that again because, uh, yeah, borders. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I uh, bought him, brought him the bottle, and you know we made a using Instagram with uh, the the live feature and the story feature. It's a super cool new way of making a narrative. So I met up with people along the way that are various whiskey guys. Uh, we've hung out with a few while we're in Chicago, and we've actually been systematically having everyone we meet uh, sign the bottle. So we're about a third, about so yeah, yeah. A third so, of the way full right now. So we have this on display. This is the bottle. This is the 2001 Resurrection. Um, my in, my in, my story. interest in this whiskey is not with an expectation that has to be the best whiskey I've had. It's probably far from it. It's, um, but I, as, as someone who really appreciates Brooklady and the kind of story of Brooklady and how it was mothballed and then reopened in 2000, um, and they lured the head distiller Bowmore at the time, Jim McEwen, over to kind of resurrect the distillery. And so this this was bottled in 2008 as a seven year old. Um, whiskey, but it was the first spirit to run off its stills in the new era. Um, 
And so, yeah, so it's basically, so, so as someone who really, you know, for, who's a fan of Jim McEwen's work, um, and I wanted to take the time to say that Adam Hand, the current distiller at Berkeley, who, who did the 5.1, who's on those two, the 10, the Lattie, new Lighting 10, the Port Charlotte 10, is phenomenal as well. But Jim, this is just the first spear that ran off the stills. It matured for seven years and was actually bottled. It's very unique in that it's lightly peated. So it's, it's the classic Berkeley is unpeated. The Port Charlotte, which is they call heavily peated. But this is, is this like 10 ppm? 10, 5 to 10 ppm. It's just a unique whiskey. So yeah, so he brought this, and then here's kind of the tin. We've had people, everyone we've met and kind of who has joined along this experience the last couple of days has been signing this tin. And there will be more tonight. You can see. So yeah, we have some blank space. You can. We wait. want. We hey, we want to sign that. that. I was thinking about. Yeah. Send so, it. Send it to us. We'll send it. We'll sign it and send it back to you. Well, one of the one of the one of the new business, one of the new business ventures I'm going to be uh, pursuing right now is actually. Uh, hand delivering bottles to people all over the country. It's a really good way for brands to get massive exposure um, along with it becoming a trend. So who knows, maybe one day I might just show up at your doorstep with a bottle of really good scotch. You never know. Uh, oh yeah. Make it, make it sherry based. I like the way you talk. <laughs> you don't let me get away with that though. What, what'd you say? I said, I want to sherry, make it sure it's sherry based. I was sure you said Pete. <laughs> <laughs> So, if there's a combo, hello. So I'm going to pour another whiskey. Um, what would you guys recommend? Ooh. First of all, um, in, in the interim, I may have poured what? slightly a little more of now, that. Wait, we we do still have the mystery dram yet from the Scotch Malt Whiskey do. Society. Do you want to announce that? I was, I was alluding to that. You want okay. to I was alluding. So I will park this with coin... 333. Oh, I've got wow. that 332. I'll park that. Um, By the way, for later afterward, Amy from Michigan, thank you for the chips. Love what Amy's sending. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I haven't opened this or smelled it. When I was talking to Ben the other night, he kind of said this was the other side of the spectrum for other what side. we just tasted. Other yeah, side. I, I mean, so, I, I, Scott, I kind of told you before, but I had sent, you know, I, this is from another society bottle that I have. Um, I thought, you know, getting the society for the first time, it'd be fun to taste multiple whiskeys. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of my, in line with my personal style preference, if you will. Um, and I, I put in that mystery label. I didn't tell you what it is because I was watching your blind bourbon shoot out. I thought it'd be fun for you guys to kind of just figure it out and see how long it would take. Ooh, I'm loving you already, brother. I, I got that. We're going we're gonna to pour it along with you as well. Now, see, I'm going to tell you, I erred on the side of caution there, and one of them I poured heavy, and I gave that one to Bart. Thank you, because I'm getting peat, baby. <laughs> I get some peat in there. Now, you do have that. This is, uh, I guess I, you did not put the bottling number on no, mine. Oh, he's kept it secret. Uh, but you've got it at 58.9% ABV. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hold on. I want you guys to just take some time with it, then maybe we can talk about what yep. it is and try to figure out maybe the distillery and – God. Let's just put it this way. I'm, I'm happy. It's I'm so happy. Good. I'm it's happy so we good. waited to drink this. If this was first, oh, oh yeah, no, you, yeah, you can't do the peat first, right? I say, I say, Lafroy just right off the bat. It just reminds me of Lafroy lore, which I just had last night. This is this is a whiskey that um, one of one of my uh, ex girlfriends hated peated whiskey when I drink it. So anytime we got in a fight, I would just grab a bottle. <laughs> whiskey and start drinking and she'd leave the room and i was so, so you tried to fight with her every other night right you'd be yeah. like we're fighting again <laughs> Bring I, kept out I kept running out of a flag and, and art bag so <laughs> you come in and you look fat in that dress where's the bottle <laughs> <laughs> my mother hates it too if my father if my father brings out his his log he loves his log of wound 16 if he brings that out it's like i'm not kissing an ashtray tonight and uh, right upstairs <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. I get some earthy clay notes. Uh, oh. For me, this is like Lefroy, Lefroy loves it. This is like for me, like. Bart, yeah. do you know what it is? Is it is the secret out? The secret's pretty the secret's much out. I, well, uh, Lefroy. Bart won't. He needs to spend more time with. I it. do. I would cuddle with this. <laughs> Spoon. Me, it's, it's like it's like sniffing a barbecue on like a salty beach. Oh. Yeah, you get that. You get a little bit of the brine. It's got the salty quality, yeah. Yeah, the clay. Do you want me to kind of tell you what it is before 
You, you taste it or you want to taste it first and try no, to? No, let's, ta let's taste it and stuff. Taste Come it on. first? Yeah. Cool. All right. Wow. I'm still <laughs> loving the nose. Yeah, I'm still loving the nose here, but hold on. I do get a definite sweetness in there with it, though, as well. Just like a citrus sweet, a lighter one. Not a not a sherry influence or anything like that to it. I forgot how delicious this is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the name. It's just uh, the code. It's 29. It's a distillery 29201. The name is Pete Smoked Candied Angelica. Um, <laughs> I guess we didn't really mention that these bottles have a little description that the tasting panel comes up with. I can read it. Uh, <laughs> I can ignore these, but I, it's just, I, they're funny. But I like a walking humidor with a chocolate fountain in the middle. Because <laughs> I, I see those all in every humidor I walk in, there's a chocolate fountain. But like a <laughs> With a chocolate fountain in the middle. Do you fondue, bro? No, <laughs> like, <laughs> on. But then the then the taste came as a surprise. Medicinal peat smoke, ash and tar. And then I took this to Lake Michigan and the label kind of got wet, but I think it says water turned it into a smoked chicken pot pie and sweet smoked candied angelicas. One of 204 bottles distilled on the 1st of July, 1999, 58.9%. Um, 17 years old. Refill, Ooh, really? Refill ex bourbon barrel. Seventeen. Now Bart, I, initially on the nose, and I'm not, I'm not as versed in the peats as Bart. I thought Lafroy on the nose. It reminded me of the lore that I poured last night. Bart, you're more, you got more Brooklady experience, more Lafroy Ardbeg. What do you think? Man, you're killing me. Air boldly. No, I just can't. pronounce it boldly. <laughs> just say it. Say it. Make it so. You want me to get the broken bottle out and threaten you with it? Four hundred dollar shank. <laughs> All right, well, just a guess. Well, I just That's had this. some Lafroy last night. I'm not. I'm not getting Lafroy. Maybe I'm flat out wrong. I would lean, and it doesn't feel like it's as ashy as an Ardbeg or as earthy. It's seventeen years uh, old. I know, which is going to tame it way down. So now I'm like, I feel like I'm all over the place. I love Port Charlotte, the Scottish barley over the Isle of Barley has been really warming me up. If I was to pick between the three, I would say. It's from Brooklady, but I have no clue. And with, I'm surprised it's at 17 years. I joke around. Oh heck, we got the T-shirt. I said I mm. like my my Pete's. I like I, I like a 10 year old Pete. I like a 10 year old Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I love a 10 year old. Yeah, Pete. I know it was. I love 10 year old Pete. Oh yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, do you want me to reveal? Yes, reveal. Oh. I mean, the, it's it's not Brooklady. Um, okay. I mean, if you think with Brooklady, you know, with the change of ownership and the stock, I mean, I think it's they're not really doing much. They're not doing much. They're doing some with with independent ballers today. But uh, oh, so this is classic Lafroy, and it's yeah with the brine. It's 17 years in a single refill ex bourbon barrel, so you don't not getting as much bourbon as you did in the last one because that was first fill. Um, but I, I want to send this to you because this is one of my favorite whiskeys that I've had, as is the standard Lafroy 18 year. And Bart, I actually know that you're really into that whiskey. And you did that review a couple of years ago. And I rewatched that. And I thought, you know, what can I send you guys? Um, yeah. you, you, oh, this is this is delicious. This is even hitting my palate. Oh, the well, there we go. Now we're talking. So oh, yeah. when, I, when I joined the society, I, I said, <laughs> I told them, I said, listen, I, when it comes to this society whiskey, Number one on my list right now is I want to try, you know, a cast ring Lafroy because the, for me, the best Lafroy I've ever had came from either from the cask itself of the distillery or just independent bottlers, just high cast strength. And this is a unique one because it, it is 17 years, which is pretty old. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, this is another example of a very unique whiskey, um, more higher price point than, than the last one we tried. But it's anyway, that's. That's my love affair with um, this one. Well, thank you. And you're right. The brine, the brine that's on it kind of should have been uh, a helpful tip. Well, for me, for me with this one, actually, um, and I, I always, um, not so much with bourbon, but with scotch, I always add a little water. I like this with no water, personally. Mm. Um, my my personal taste is, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to add water, because I was fortunate enough to go to a, uh, a big tasting with with the scotch they, they invited me to go to a big tasting in new york city and this was one this was the last one i tried which was good because it's it's a real palate wrecker and in, in the best possible oh. sense like i'll be tasting this for the next 30 40 minutes see i i totally i hear what you're saying it is so good neat but i respectfully you like it better with water disagree well i don't necessarily like it better but i think oh. to experience the
evolution of this whiskey is such a cool thing. Well, is, I've like, experienced it. I just really prefer it without any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, and I've and I've done. I'm just like neat. Like wow, that was such a mouthful. Um, yeah. Just adding water, more of that salinity forward. It is more breezy and approachable. Um, and it really is kind of a different whiskey. And I probably do prefer it neat too. But like to be able to experience that. Oh yeah, no, I definitely. It's awesome. Added it, but I know. Oh, I was there. I turn around. Well, nice. so. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yes, it looks like every other SMW. Yeah, bottle, it's but... a label in a green bottle, and this one, as you can see, Ben has definitely enjoyed yeah. quite a bit. It is, um, you know, and it's... shared. Thank you. I have yeah. another. This is. It's, like, this it sounds like cool. Nate might be fighting you over the rest of that bottle. Yeah, this is another one. I like. I've been kind of like saving this, like going slow, but this is a. I, I can't. I can't keep this one for long. This is. It's, 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 it's really good. <laughs> I heard Dexter wanting a little bit. Yeah, uh, Dexter's yeah. getting upset again. He wants he wants Ben to spill more. But if Ben spills again, I'm you know, gonna, I'm gonna get upset. He can't do the peak. He said, you know, give me sherry all day long. <laughs> I don't know if any of you can if you relate to like that. Dog, but. Yeah. Well, no, I'll tell you. Uh, generally, I lean towards sherry's, but I do recognize a good peat as well. And I've bought a few. I've got the Octomore six point three back here. Mm -hmm. uh, several Lafroigs, you know, the eighteen year, ten year, triple wood, the lore. I've got the Ardbeg Dark Cove back here. Port Charlotte. A couple of Lagavulins. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, some of the better pieces. I, I do keep them around. I just don't go to them as often. For me. Um, but I do, I recognize that one as soon as that one hit my palate. I, I recognize it. Recognize that as a good scotch. Oh, when I when I tasted this for the first time at, at the, the SMWS event, I immediately just said Lefroy. Um I mean, if you use logic, it's it's pretty, oh, he's back. Um <laughs> Well, and I might not have had I not just had Lefroy Glore last night. I might not have. I might not have been like I, I don't know what that is. I worked it in the I worked in the bar rent, restaurant industry for nine years, and I would walk. Uh, you know, a lot of bars I worked at, you had two bartenders, and if someone was drinking a, a peaty scotch, for some reason there's just such a difference in 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 uh, in, in the nosing of Lefroy and Lagavulin that no matter even if they drank on the rocks, I could walk by and be like, "You're drinking Lefroy. You're drinking Lagavulin." And really. There were times I was wrong, but I, I'd say like 90% of the time, I usually got it right. Huh. Wow. But I mean, we didn't have any Ardbeg or really any other peated whiskey. So it was, it was a 50-50 shot. So maybe maybe I'm just like, you know, uh, toot, toot my own horn a little bit. But I, I think personally the noses um, between peated scotches are easier to define, probably because there aren't as many as there are space side. But for me, it's, it's, it's not too difficult. And I agree with you completely when it comes to – as soon as I drank this, I was like, that's Lefroy. Um, and – it's absolutely phenomenal. But look at, I had a little bit of water, but like, you know, this is what 17 year old Lefroy looks like from a color perspective. This is obviously Especially nat a natural. Cask. Yeah, it's and awesome. I love the 18 year, but you know, this is yeah, what Lefroy yeah. looks like in a refill barrel. It's, it's pale. I, again, I just yeah. I did add some water, but you know, the 18 year old color. is much darker. And unfortunately that's the one thing about the distillery that I'm not too crazy over. It's people have different opinions about that, but it, they do add, add artificial color in to the 18 year. So. Well, yeah, and even the tenure, and you're like, yeah, why? Pale, oh, pale, yeah. pale, pale, pale. Yeah. 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 Oh, I hope if you, if you guys saw their new uh, Cardace this year, right? It's a cast drink uh, quarter cask. No, I we have not seen that one. Uh, well, it's, they, they sent me, I work, I do some work with Lefroy, so they sent me a bottle um, a little early. But, oh, man, look out for that stuff on the shelf. It is good. Really? <laughs> it is good. I'm already halfway through the bottle, and that's saying something, but it's that good. <laughs> Is it like a 21 year Glendronic? No, no, that would be phenomenal if it were. I mean, because <laughs> that's a great one. I won't say no to it. I like both of those. Like, the Glendronic that's, that's 21 such year opposite, is opposite sides of the spectrum. That is, yes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You got to air. Okay. I got some guys fired up. I tuned in. The Scotch Four Dummies were having oh, a live God. stream. Yeah, listen they to were, this. They were having a live stream the other night, and they talked about uh, – they had people posting, what's your three favorite – or no, kind of the sidebar chat in the chat box, we had started talking about different sherried whiskeys and just different distilleries in in general that were our favorites. Well, then the Scotch Four Dummies, they saw those comments, and they said, well, let's narrow it down. What's your three fa favorite Isla distilleries? <laughs> and I knew it was going to get some people fired up, but I replied, Isla distilleries are all the same. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. 
Exactly. Uh, everybody knows a, I'm the sheriff. You did it to beat. pick a fight. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. I knew that. I knew that would get the comments coming in. Yeah, that'll uh, that'll piss some uh, some people off. <laughs> I think I think when, when it comes to when it comes to a theme and the theme of Isla, for the most part, I mean, you obviously have your Balmore and you have your uh, Boomba Hobbit and Brooklady. I mean, you got a lot of unpeated Isla whiskeys, but when people think peat, they think smoke, 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 smoke. There is so much complexity to a, an Isla malt. And for me, honestly, I think it's the most delicate region. Like, I think uh, when it comes to, to, to Isla malts, they, 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 the oxidation affects them massively. Right. Um, if, I have, if I have an Isla malt, like that bottle, I don't want to keep open for too long or with too much oxygen because it, it, will, it will start to go pretty quickly. And water can change it yes. an incredible amount. So for me, I find it funny that the, the biggest like turn off to people, peated scotch, is actually the most susceptible to change mm -hmm. um, to any kind of variance. And for me, like I absolutely my my I'm a, I'm a I'm a sucker for any sort of Isla smoky malt that's aged in port. Like uh, Lafroy 2013 Cardace is easily out of God knows how many whiskeys now I've drank. He might not even know is one of my top five. It's it's like a port like a, it, not too old but just a port. Cask aged Lafroy. Oh God, I can't. No, I have one bottle left. I literally have. Tra I travel the country and I look in every liquor store. Immediately go to, to Scotch, just hoping, praying that I can find one more. And I haven't in like two years. So I have one unopened, one left, and it is honestly like like I said, one of my top five pours of all time. But that's, yeah, that's we, my we palate. That's what I love. We haven't had any peated from a port cask. Um, okay, okay. Oh, so you're my, missing out. So my, my personal favorite, I put this on Instagram, but my favorite whiskey last year. Um, it was actually a 2014 release. I have a couple le left, and I, I will send you guys a sample just because okay. I think you know after this conversation, um, it's no long. It's been gone for a couple of years, but it was a Kill Homan port cask matured, which was a really good a three year old <laughs> full full term, you know, peated spirit matured and and port you know, in the port pipe, bottle at 55%. And I think I've just never had a whiskey like that. And I, I, you know, is it yesterday, you get to taste it today, but it's- Oh, I actually um, get to taste it? Yeah, we were like running out the door. <laughs> we, we came from a, we, a distillery we a, and we're like- We had a busy day We had about a, a lot of whiskey in our palate. I was like, let's just wait. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's well, just, I think you guys were drinking Thursday night, Friday day, Friday night, uh, Saturday morning. I'm gonna hazard a guess. You probably, you've already been imbibing a little bit. And you're probably going into Saturday night, early Sunday morning. You're still going to be drinking a little bit. My car's in the parking garage. I'm not driving anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> Uber, baby. Exactly. We've, we've just it. been posting on Instagram and just saying, hey, if you're in Chicago, come meet us for a drink. We'd love to just say hi and, and meet you. And so people have been coming to us. It's and, been great. And to, today, more and more are kind of joining in. And so... Quite quite a while back, Tom R had asked because he's in the Chicago area. But what's some of your favorite bars? My brother's whiskey bars. My brother's or, in the Chicago. So that's all you, sir. So last night I took Nate um, to a bar that's called Twisted Spoke. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, if you in Chicago, Twisted Spoke. It's it's a cat. I think there there are three whiskey bars that I think by far have the best whiskey selection. If you if we're talking about whiskey, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. And a couple of them, maybe three, but a couple of them have really good deals on Wednesdays for Whiskey Wednesday. So, so Twisted Spoke is a is a casual place on just oh, here on the west side. Um, and every Wednesday, all whiskey is half price. Literally, Ooh, all and, whiskey. And I'm I'm like, hesitant to say this publicly because I don't want really? this policy. But their pours are the most generous pours I've ever seen. I mean, we're talking about three or four ounce pours. So, I would oh, go. I and, would I would make sure I did not have to work on Thursday. Oh wow. Good. It's it's been, I mean it's great. I mean the ownership and the management is great. They're just great people. Everybody loves whiskey, and it's just it's a bar the and a wall of whiskey, phenomenal. and it's very small. So we went there last night, had a burger and, and some yeah, whiskey. Food, and food was excellent as well. They had um, just they have a lot. It's a huge selection. The other one I would say is Fountainhead, way up on the north side, and that's the one that's the, the society is one of their it's one of their partner bars. Um, they do like forty percent off on Wednesdays. These are just the, in Chicago we have a few, and then Delilah's is one that everybody knows as well. But yeah. So that's the answer, the long answer to, to those three. Yeah. Um, and just to tease you a little bit, Jimmy Drammer has pointed out that he has two of the Cardias port casks oh. left. Hey, Jimmy, uh, can I hand deliver a bottle of whiskey to your door and maybe we do a little because <laughs> I'll do it. 
Well, Jimmy Drammer, that's a uh, whiskey with a view on Instagram. Contact him. And, yeah, I'm uh, not joking because I'll, I'll yeah. do a sw I'll drive out. I mean, I do bottle delivery now, but I mean, I'll, I'll take bottle one. swap. <laughs> yeah. I'll take one. It's it's <laughs> you'd be hey, it'd be amazing what you do for a bottle of that, huh? Oh. Uh, we're not gonna go there, but yeah. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, had, I think I had, I had one. <laughs> Wow. That was another oh, another. This is, no, this is the the car, this, this is era. this is the 2015 Karchus, uh Oh yeah, or Karchus, yeah, Cardias. Well, Karchus, he, Karchus, yeah, Karchus, which means it's Gaelic for a friendship. Well, um, one, nice. one I did cool, not know that. One of the cool things Ben introduced me to yesterday, and I, I am an I am an absolute no way, shape, or form uh, an expert when it comes to wine based products. So what he did was pour me a glass of Madeira. To sample alongside of whiskey, which is a really cool thing that I definitely recommend. And like I said, I'm a total novice. I've drank a $1,200 bottle of wine not knowing what I'm drinking, and got yelled at for not knowing what I'm drinking. Sure. I mean, I, I know, like I said, I'm I know nothing other than than whiskey. And then you told her to go to bed. You grabbed your peat at whiskey. Break out the peat. So, um, but yeah, no, this the, the Madeira cask is, is another of my definitely favorite Lafroyc releases. And Portwood still for me is the the end all be all, but. Um, that that is some some phenomenal stuff as well. Yeah, I do drink. I've, I have been drinking. I mean, for obvious reasons, sherry and port and Madeira, and so I turn only because I'm a whiskey enthusiast and want to really understand like what what's go. You know, what are these flavors coming from? Right. And it's amazing. Like, and I would say this year I've been really getting into it, and it's fun. But I enjoy it just drinking it now. But when I taste whiskey that's been matured or finished in these types of casks, it's you know I, a lot of people are saying like I'm getting this weird spice and clove and this and that and in my head now, I now and it only took me a couple of bottles in to really understand. Well, that's just Oloroso sherry, for instance. You know what I mean? You're describing that, and it's really helped me as a whiskey enthusiast understand. And so now, when I taste it, I what, it's it's no longer a mystery, and it's kind of fun. So I got Nate was saying, you know, he wasn't into it. I had a bottle of Madeira in the fridge, and Madeira once you open it, it's been essentially pasteurized, so it lasts forever. Um, it's been oxidized, and so it, you can just keep. It has a cork like a whiskey bottle. So I just poured a glass, and yeah, I love drinking that after whiskey or alongside a whiskey in the shirt and that type of cast. It's a lot of fun. Now, see, we, have, we, have, done, we have we have done port and sherry, sure, but not a beer. Hmm. Well, for us, it's just an excuse to have a second drink, and you know, yeah. no one can say anything about it. It's uh, for science. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> but dear, there's they're different. I mean, sherry is it. The, the, Sherry spectrum is as diverse as wine itself, essentially. But Madeira, there are a couple different, really kind of different types that are very, very different. And one, like the Malmsey Rich Madeira, is like a thick, viscous prune juice, kind of like a PX Sherry. And there's like a rain. There's just they're different types, and so um, not all Madeira is the same. I would just say that. Wow. Well, now we had we had last year's uh, Karchus, right. which was Madeira. I think it was Madeira. That was that was the Madeira. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, this one. But, uh, that one was kind of. I did not pick up besides the peat. I wasn't able to get any of the Madeira out of that. It had, it had a very jammy quality to it, is the way I describe it. Um, and for me, like I, I did, I did really enjoy it. Um, I'm also a big fan of any like a tight, like a burgundy wine cask, like uh, Springbank, which I've been obsessed. Like the Springbank was the scotch that got me into scotch. They re released a 12 year burgundy cask that, oh man, is just absolutely. I mean, any, I've never had a bad Springbank. I don't, I don't know if anyone can say they've had a bad Springbank, but for me, that was one of my top releases. Um, but for me personally, and someone out there is going to be pissed, but Ah, the port would still wins by a little bit for me, for my, for my palate personally. Well, and here, here's an update. Jimmy Drammer gives you Nate. He says, "Bring me a 2017 Karchus and we'll swap." But I'm about a thousand miles from where you are now. That's not too far. I'd, That's it. I'd drive that in a week. <laughs> hey Scott, hey tell Scott, him to, tell him to shoot me a message on on Instagram. We'll arrange something. Scott, to your point on the 2016 Karchus Madeira, it says here on the bottle that it's actually been fully matured in ex bourbon barrels. And I quote, before being artfully married together for a second maturation in Madeira. So it's not full term Madeira. And so obviously those flavors would be a lot light. Unlike that Kilhoman I was describing, which is three years full term, you know, port wine casking. So different, yeah. Wow. Mm. All right. That's one of the fun things that I absolutely love about whiskey. And you know, it, it's actually fun watching people battle it out, but everyone has 
such a vastly different palette and and Ben and I hanging out over the past couple of days has really been just like we, we do have very different palettes and it's cool to see like one person's opinion like I can definitely see the appeal of a very sherry whiskey but I personally I don't I, I get it I get why people like it but for me like I definitely stray on the the smokier uh, I mean, I also have a sweet a bourbon cask. Yeah, yeah, like I, a, yeah, like a bourbon cask age. But and I love bourbon uh, as a rule, and and Ben's much more into scotch. So I think it's great and really cool that you know certain people will affiliate themselves not just necessarily affiliate, but they just really love a certain type of 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 whiskey or a certain distillery. And I mean, it's cool. I love introducing people, and I've been introduced to stuff where I'm like, "Wow, like, I I never knew like Kilhoman for me it was it was, it was really eye opening as a very young Isla malt that that is really spectacular and really a, a testament to what they do when it comes to blending and the type of casks they use. So it, it it's just so much fun being able to to go into all these things, and yeah, you, you like what you like, and you don't what you don't. But this, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's. A lot of people, I mean, certain things people agree on, but I just All love right. the variety and I just love the fact that so many different whiskeys are out for so many different people and we can all just bitch at each other when we don't like the same thing. So <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. I agree. We got a lot of whiskey, but, but like, Nate, how did you get into being a brand and some of the other things? Um, I worked. I worked in the whiskey industry. Well, I got into the whiskey industry. I, I started. Um, I was just uh, worked in restaurants, bars, um, from everything from dive bars, nightclubs, mixology, cocktail, what every kind of bar you can imagine. Uh, and then when I was when I was young, I uh, did as many teenagers do and drank too much of a certain Tennessee whiskey, and uh, did not have. It was not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, no, Richard, Richard. <laughs> let's let's just say it wasn't a great night for me or anyone around me, uh, and so I I immediately attributed whiskey to um, copious amounts of vomit. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't touch it again till I was I think twenty three. An old restaurant manager uh, said, on my birthday gave me a bottle of Maker's Mark, and he said, "Here, I want oh, this is your birthday." It was like Scott, like. Come on, man! Like, I don't, I don't drink whiskey. He's like, this is bourbon. So, uh, he said he had me. He said, drink this on the rocks, one glass a night for a week, and you'll love it. And by day five, I was hooked. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's also a certain machismo to drinking whiskey. Like, there's no other liquor really out there that you can Come drink on, and just man. feel manly. Mojito. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a whiskey mojito. I do like it. I love mojitos, by the way. No, I do. Uh, I like the mojitos. Victor's American much. whiskey makes a slamming mojito. The only liquor uh, I know how to do it. So, um, so anyway, mojito. So um, when I did that, I started uh, – that was when Instagram was really starting to take off. And I started doing uh, Instagram blogging about uh, just reviews and what I thought of whiskey. And this is really before the, the whiskey Instagram <laughs> took off. So – uh, I started getting, you know, a couple followers, people interested, and then um, I was approached. I, w I went to a couple uh, whiskey guild, which is, you know, one of those big whiskey events, and uh, I had a representative from William Grant and Sons, specifically Glenn Fittick, really uh, enjoy talking to me. And I was young; I was only twenty-five at that point, um, and uh, they were looking for a position to be filled for an associate brand ambassador in New Jersey. Uh, so before that, I was talking to McCallan, and and uh, I ended up going with Glenn Fittick because uh, my my old boss came into my bar, and said, "I want to hire you. Uh, this is what you need to do. We're going to have an interview, and if you if you make the cut, we'll hire you next week." And I went, and needless to say, I got hired. I worked with William Grant for two years. Um, I'm still very close with a lot of the brand ambassadors. I see what you're doing, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, and I still I still love I absolutely adore the products and I still work with them as much as I can. Um, but I worked with them for two years as an associate brand ambassador, and uh, that was when Whiskey with a View was conceived because a lot of people interacted with uh, the pictures I took of whiskey when I'd go hiking. Um, so now, fast forward, not even two years later, um, it's blown up to over 64,000 followers, 
Um, I've had over 16,000 submissions because I feature people's work every week. Well, except I missed yesterday. I totally forgot yesterday was Friday. I, I do a featured we Friday. We were busy, Nate. We were busy. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry to anyone that's watching that, that, that I didn't. I usually am very good about that, and anyone can attest to that. But I, work, I feature about six to seven pictures every week from around the world that people will bring bottles with them on vacation or hikes. I've even had a guy take pictures of a bottle at the base camp of Mount Everest. Like, really cool wow. stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've had – like I said, over 16,000 submissions in the past under two years. Um, and well, that's, that's about what we're doing with our traveling dummies. Uh, but I the, almost with brought the coins up if you, had, if you had climbed, climbed Everest yet, and here yeah. you are mentioning that's, someone. That's actually, we, we just discussed that. Uh, <laughs> first, I'm planning on getting a whiskey company to sponsor me to the Appalachian Trail. Uh, I want to do that for, for nice. the year. And then in about in, in probably eight or nine years, if I haven't fallen and, and off a cliff and died yet, uh, I fully intend to tackle Mount Everest and be the first person to shoot a bottle of whiskey on top of Everest. And I swear to God, if anyone watching this does that before me, I'm going to be very upset at you. Wow. Very, very You've announced it. I mean, I feel like I've announced it before. But oh, okay. Just saying. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I want to. I mean, if they do that, then I'm gonna have to do K2, and if I do K2, I'm probably gonna die. But I mean, yes, be careful. That's all I'm saying. We got to have you still on Instagram. Yeah, but so it's it's been an absolute blast uh, transitioning. I mean, uh, after William Grant, I worked uh, with with Michters, who I'm still very close with, um, oh, national brand ambassador as well. Uh, and I decided, you know, the social media is rapidly becoming the new form of advertisement when it comes to cost, hyper targeting audiences. You know, and and I'm. It's really cool to do something that I absolutely love. And as a new business, you know, barely scrape by certain months. But I'd rather do that than than make you know six figures and and have to be in an office or sitting behind a desk or doing something I don't like. Sure. Uh, when we get off, when, when we when get we off get camera, camera, we'll tell you we agree. We agree. You're not being in our <laughs> office. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, now I get to travel. I can do awesome stuff with, with like, like I'm doing with Ben right now. Like I get to travel, meet people, uh, climb mountains, take pictures of whiskey, you know, have a glass or two, of course. Um, but it, it's it's honestly an absolute blessing, and uh, I'm grateful. For, I don't take it for granted at all. And and I try to, I, I will like anyone that I meet, and I go, I'll go out of my way to meet people. I'll try also try to bring people on hikes. Like I love meeting up with people and be like, all right, let's hit this place, let's hit this place, or they take me somewhere. So for me, I try to – it is social media, but I try to nowadays make it much more personal as well. Um, rather than just knowing people from online interaction, I want to bring it to a, a more personal level, more intimate experience. So Now, I'm giving you a little side view, too. When the next time you're in Colorado, if you can stop in Evergreen – sorry, we're getting a little bit of echo on my side. Check the volume real quick. Are you getting a little feedback? Uh, yeah, not, not too yeah. bad. That's good. Sorry, we had some is comments. That a result of our microphone, though. I was seeing, watching those comments come in. Yeah, I know it. I don't know which. I end think it was we on. turned ours down. I was just hearing an echo, but I don't hear it now, so I no, think we're it good. Solved itself. It, it yeah, fixed it itself. Yeah, we hear you good. Okay. Try again. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And no, no echo coming out. I don't know what happened. It was, it was like a little reverb there for a bit. Next time you're in Colorado, about 45 minutes up from the west side of Denver, go through the old part of Evergreen. They have a little bar called Little Bear. Little Bear. And in there, they usually feature, if it's still the same, it's live entertainment every night of the week. And mm -hmm. uh, so you, you may only have eight people in on a Wednesday or something, but they'll have a live entertainer in. Um, I grew, that's the town I grew up in. Uh, Willie Nelson doesn't live there anymore, but he used to live in the town and he would even pop in and just jam with whoever was live. Smoke some dude. <laughs> well, that's Colorado now. That wasn't Colorado then. I'm just saying, at least for me, but, uh, but check that out. Um, but then Ben, so, yes. and, and I don't want to cut Nate off either. If you got more Nate, but Ben, tell us some more about what you're doing and where you came at it from. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Keep so we're just reminiscing of the funny. No, no, that was great. I'm just in full force. No, please. Yeah. Come on. Look at this guy over here. Has to hit me with a stick because I talk too much. Please. No, 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 no. We were just like laughing about some of the comments. Um, but no, so, so I, unlike Nate, Nate, Nate is really kind of pioneering um, a really cool career doing this, what he loves. Um, Whiskey is something I love, obviously. I think we all know that. 
it's been oh it's a side project for me um my my, my the single multi alliance it's kind of confusing because it's really just me but in origin it was two friends and myself i'm an, I'm an ally of yours now oh thank you but it was you know it was, it was three of <laughs> us two, was, us two <laughs> thank you guys it's working uh, but no, it was originally the intent was three of us wanted to start a club in Chicago. That's it, you know, and we call ourselves the Single Multi Alliance. And um, my contribution up front is I said, I'll, I'll start, I like photography and, and I'm familiar with Instagram. I'll, I'll run that front and really kind of build a presence there. Um, one of the three of us had actually moved back home to Austria right around the time. So it really never, the club never took off the ground. Um, but so it's really, I've been, you know, blogging on that name for almost a couple of years now. Um, but me, you know, for me, it was originally it was about what everyone's doing, experiencing different whiskeys, you know, understanding of formulating our, my own preferences and just, you know, tasting whiskey. I was, you know, I think the first year I was all about just tasting as many whiskeys as I, as I can. I, I accumulated more whiskey than necessary. Um, and now I, I've kind of I'm at this point where I'm just I look back on the past couple of years with Instagram and I just have loved meeting people. I mean, such as Nate, who's here, who. You know, two people who we've interacted with for a couple of years and never met until two days ago. And, you know, it's, I think whiskey is such an amazing thing in that sense. And the community has been really just a, a, so many benefits in life. And so um, I have, I'm not, it's not a career for me. I have, you know, a career that I'm really excited about completely separate from this. Um, but, you know, I just, it's, for me, it's just been an experience. I write these long reviews. I like the photography aspects. Um, this year has been, been it's about getting to know whiskeys in, in meaningful ways that are different and just celebrating the, the art that is whiskey. I think it's just an art. Um, but I, I can't emphasize enough the fact that the people such as your, you know you guys here and everybody else involved has just been so spectacular. And that for me, when I look back, has been so much more meaningful than, hey, I had this 30-year-old whiskey. It was super rare. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that is so not important. We were at, and just a quick shout out, we were at Few Spirits up in, north of Chicago, uh, they, they saw us post on Instagram and invited us up to go up there. And we were just talking to them and saying, look, tasting your rye whiskey at the distillery after getting this tour, and there's nothing better. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be something fancy. And we had the privilege, you know, in front of us here, tasting some pretty rare, you know, you know whiskeys. But for me, it's, it's not about that. Like I have a, pre I like malted malt barley and I like malt whiskey, but it's not about you know what the whiskey is. I think it's just the experience of coming together and using that as a vehicle to connect people who would have otherwise never have been friends or never have even met. So that's just that's a little overview of my my love for this passion project of mine. I agree. We agree, hundred percent. Well, yeah. I mean, really, yeah, it's just having really just having fun and relaxing and de-stressing well, and, and that, just sharing whiskey and that whiskey fabric that's there. I mean, it, it's it's really cross-cultural, cross-country, cross, I mean. Uh, oh, it's crazy. I, I was telling Ben a story the other day. I was I was working in uh, France in the French Alps, and I went into a bar uh, that was had an absolutely outstanding whiskey selection. I'm talking like bottles I never thought I'd taste, you know, crazy Port Allen, um, rare, rare Japanese whiskey, you know, green glass, you know, uh, Pappy Van Winkle, all this crazy stuff. So this guy didn't speak any English. I don't speak any French. We managed to sit down for about three hours drinking whiskey. And a busboy would come by once in a while and translate a few certain things. But other than that, like, there, the, the language barrier wasn't really there when the main thing that connected was was the liquid and, and for me that was a really eye-opening experience the fact that i've drank with millionaires i've drank with movie stars i've drank with a guy that barely scrapes by every week and honestly it's all the same it, it really doesn't matter who you are as long as you're just a really good human and i mean i've also dealt with some assholes but uh <laughs> when you're just a good when you're about scott <laughs> we're, we're the guys that scrape by every week no, we're when, when, you're, when you're just a good human and you have a similar interest, it's just really cool how you can get this amazing vibe and this sim this the symmetry with 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 someone and just enjoy. Like I, if I if I never knew anything other, about Ben other than he liked drinking whiskey, we would hang out and not have to know anything else. Like and but but you know it's cool really getting to know people that I never would have ever met and I wouldn't have a career if it weren't for whiskey. In fact, I, I was going down a dark road with alcohol before I got into whiskey, which ironically pulled me out of that dark hole because it became a passion. So, so you're, you're saying Goldschlager? 
Oh, Jaeger. I was afraid. Jaeger. Jaeger Meister. <laughs> Meister and Boone's Farm Chasers is what you're talking. <laughs> and I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I had no drive, and it was funny that whiskey kind of pulled me out of that. And I've met some of the most absolutely incredible people. Had some of the best experiences of my life, and it, it gave me, honestly, kind of a new life in the sense that I got to do what. I love and everyone should do what they love for me. Like I, I, I'm a kind of wild at heart. I can't sit around. I don't do ruts. I don't, you know, someone mentioned an office job. If that's your thing, that is awesome. Good for you. Sure. I can't do it. I'll go absolutely insane. Sure. I, I need to, I need to do what I love and what I'm passionate about. And, and it, it, the fact that not just whiskey, but the community, like anyone watching and you guys and Ben and everyone else I'm going to meet, like that's really what, has created this really amazing thing, not just for me, but for other people. Many people share the similar experience. So I, I just think it's it's really just a beautiful thing, not just to drink, but the community that has evolved around it. Well, it was funny. You just, uh, I mean, uh, and I know it's not you, but with your hat backwards and the beard, you remind me of a guy I met one time that used to ride horses in Afghanistan. Uh, he, was in, <laughs> he was in the military, but he was a unique, unique character, and it was the beard and the hat backwards, and and I can't even remember his name. I only met him once, but I was like, you remind me of this guy that I know that was in Afghanistan early that was riding horses. And Why do you, you think Nate's him? No, but but right off the bat, hasn't said anything about Afghanistan no, or horses. No, what I'm saying is this guy was a free spirit. However, he was in a very um, uh, well, you can't call it a linear field, but he was in what would be typically thought of as a, a militaristic field, but he was a free spirit, a very smart person. He had the beard, the hat backwards, and he would ride horses into places that no one would go to. Sorry, yeah. that's kind of cryptic, but immediately when I yeah, saw wow. you. Yeah, what are you talking about there? I don't know. <laughs> Good thing you coded that one. What, you figured it out? Yeah. Sorry, he's mad at me now. No, I'm just saying. His initials are Jonathan J.D. Wingo. Winkler. <laughs> hey, a question came in. I think it's probably about time. Uh, uh, we're, we're at an hour. Over, and but I'm yeah. having a blast. We're at but an go hour ahead. Go ahead. Still, it's still going good, but we better shut her down. Right, right. Uh, someone with food, some insider food quigs, knowledge. Food Quig's ready to go. Food Quig was here. He's probably ready to start the after party. <laughs> He wants, he says, Nate, tell us how you met Ashley. So there's what? some insider information there. Ashley. Uh, I know a lot of Ashley. Wow. Maybe uh -huh. he means like the ash in the glass from like I'm a, an guess, island. I guess because uh, I have a very good friend, Ashley, uh, who goes on Instagram under always neat review, who does the sassiest whiskey reviews that you can imagine. And they are an absolute blast to behold. Um, I strongly encouraged her when I interacted with her. I was like, you've got to start posting these. Like, these are amazing. Um, I'm guessing that's the Ashley who's referring to. She's, she's, she's a character. Else, she stands out. Someone else wants to see Ben's legs one more time. They're wonderful. You want to test them? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. We got some high calf. Well, let's see your legs. No, they're very hairy. Everybody likes you. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if that's the Ashley referring to, I honestly, I've never met her in person, but we just interact on Instagram and got along great. And she's a, she's a wonderful human being, but her reviews just, they, they crack me up. And, and anyone that follows her knows that, that they are just. Well, they just, we had a live stream the other night and kind of a deal was we had to, it, it was kind of a, a, a hidden deal in there, but there were several reviewers together and they said, whoever starts talking about Coca-Cola zero, first wins the competition basically so I, I ran out to the store and i bought a bottle of coca coca-cola zero and it happens to be i'm drinking it with <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if she's Wait. watching this but i'm gonna have to send her the link that's, she's gonna get a crack a, at it that's, gonna a gonna a limited, out. that's a limited edition now coke zero yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 i, I want to tell good. you the peat the peat smoke on this even empty Topped off is delicious. The nose on this is phenomenal. No, look that that whiskey. I think is really spectacular. I think it's. I think for and this is a personal opinion, but Lafroy. I think I love it at seven years old. I love it young and hot. Um, but I also love it. You know, Bart loves I love it. it yeah. I love it in the middle. But when it gets older, it's it's a total different thing. But the distillery bottlings that you get are don't have the same ABV, and so 
they're they're very elegant but to experience something like from Lafroy at 17 years which a lot happens at that that spirit from the usual 10 that we know to, to 17 at cast strength you know is really so if you like whiskey it's there's nothing better well i would say and yeah i went back to the romantic inspiration after the 17 year old Lafroig. Mm -hmm. And I like the romantic inspiration better. I but that's love me. the romantic too. I mean, I've been, but the yeah. nose on this, oh. But to go back, you know, we kind of started, <laughs> and the gist of this was the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Um, and, and just if you're watching, just check out, <laughs> just go check out the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. See oh, if it's for you. I thought you were talking to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, saying if you're watching, please contact the Scotch <laughs> Test Dummies. No, well, they're watching. We know they're watching. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're watching. Yeah. Please contact. It might not still be, but yeah, All right. No, for anybody that's watching, go check out the Scotch Malt Whiskey. See if it's for you. Maybe it's not for everybody, but it could be. I'm definitely interested now. My interest oh, is peaked. Um, and I'm thanks beyond, to you guys, I'm beyond, I'm beyond interested. <laughs> thanks to you guys for joining us. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. You guys talk, just give us a, you know, the cliff notes of right. each of you guys, where to find you at, what your Instagram names Self -promote, are, promote, plug, plug, plug yourselves. And then we'll close it out. Um, I'm Ben. I am also known as single malt Alliance. You can follow me on Instagram at single malt Alliance, um, or the single malt Alliance.com which is just conveniently linked to my <laughs> Instagram profile. But I, you know, I just take pictures of whiskey, write reviews and love meeting all of you. And I try to respond to every single comment and message I ever get. Um, that's what it's all about for me. So I'd love to kind of meet you in person someday, or if not, you know, as Mark Lesby says, we can meet for a dram at a, at a bar or pub <laughs> somewhere in this world. Yep. And uh, in the charming yet regrettably dry town of Haddonfield, Haddonfield New, New Jersey. Jersey. Oh, New Jersey, just in general. Uh, anyway, I'm not bitter. Uh, so, yeah, you can follow me at uh, whiskey underscore Nate with Noe and whiskey. Uh, that's my personal or whiskey with a view. Again, Noe and that where uh, I'm just going to be updating everyone on where I travel. And like I said, I if you're in the area that I'm in, I will make sure to do my best to meet up and, and have a whiskey with you. And whatever bottles I have with me, which are usually a very good amount, if it's if it's open, you can have as much as you want. Well, not as much as you want. We'll say a glass or two, depending <laughs> on how many, how many I've had. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was this was awesome. Nate's all, you're offering a lot of things. I'm, yeah, I'm going after it. I'm trying. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to smooth this over now yeah. and not talk to anyone. I got. I got <laughs> Hold on, you got to add in. Someone's got to be able to stroke the beard. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, touch the beard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, it's surprisingly coarse. <laughs> yeah, it's a little rough. <laughs> We're loving it. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of standoffish, I can tell, but I'd be like, come on, Barb. Oh, let's you'd it. be let's in there. Yeah. Let's see that oh, beard. Let's God. get all up in there and feel You're it. all rough. Look at that. You got man hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, thanks to everybody that tuned in. We appreciate it. Um, that was kind of brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Ben and Nate for joining us and the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society for, for, uh, for, the, bottle. for the bottle. And uh, it, was, it was a pleasure to uh, meet you, basically, get yes. introduced. Wow. What an introduction. I'm nosing, I'm nosing an empty Glen Cairn and falling. <laughs> All right. Well, well what are we going to do, Bart? We're going to scotch it, you scotch gods. Salancha. Dummies. Dummies. Salancha, dummies. <laughs> Hang tight. Don't go anywhere. You got it.